What's up, DFS family? And welcome back to the Sunday School NFL DFS podcast powered by Fantasy Six Pack. I'm your co host, Pat Mikowski. You can find me at Twitter, Patty Mac 33. Your host, Dave Eddy, whom you can find on Twitter at Corporal Eddy, has once again handed me the keys of the car, albeit for a couple of different reasons this week. The first one, is so that he can give that sexy ass voice of his another week's worth of rest. Oh yeah. <laughs> why don't you tell the folks at home, David, the second reason why I'm hosting this week? Well, um, after last week's podcast, um, I had came up with an idea um, because Patrick and I play in I don't know the equivalent of like a home league on DraftKings. There's <laughs> I don't know anywhere between what maybe eight to. 12 people that that do yeah. a small little contest for you know trump change each week and uh and be, i mean because patrick did do such a fantastic job um last week as well i thought that it was only fair that we went ahead and um whoever won that contest from the previous week would get the honor of hosting the show so patrick won it was fairly close i don't have it in front of me but i mean i think we we're I don't know what we were what 10 15 points apart but pa- yeah, Patrick, it wasn't that much. But doesn't matter cuz Patrick won and so Patrick is the host of the show. So whoever does the intro is, is the is the winner um from the previous week. So I, that's a fun little thing for us. I don't know who else will care but it's fun for us. Yeah. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a great idea. It gives us uh something else to go back and forth about for a week. So Yeah. Uh, but 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 before we get started uh uh, please do us a quick favor and hit that like button. If you enjoyed this podcast, do yourself a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to keep a leg up on all your buddies, swing over to fantasy six pack.net uh, to check out some more great content. Just a reminder, we're talking DraftKings main slate, MME mass multi-entry tournaments. So one thing I want to talk about here real quick is there was there ended up being a play last week that um that we both overlooked me specifically and you know hindsight's 2020 and it's something that I wanted to bring up real quick because it doesn't happen often but this is an example of what you need to keep your eyes on to really differentiate yourself give yourself some nice leverage okay and that was the Aaron Jones play from last week now i mean uh, you know Aaron Jones is is a Fantastic player. Led the league in touchdowns last year. So it's not a surprise that he had a huge day, uh, specifically against a terrible Lions team. But It was the one of us. Well, that's for you to discuss. (laughs) Um, But, you know, like I said, in hindsight, it made perfect sense to to have some, some shares of Aaron Jones because everyone was looking to the Packers side to Devontae Adams. And when we were talking running backs, it was pretty much... Get as much Zeke and get as much Henry as you can. Well, yeah. boy, what a leverage play to be able to have the same player that could leverage off two different spots. So if Devontae Adams didn't have a good day or didn't have a big day, there was a pretty good chance that that meant Aaron Jones did. So you could have gotten leverage with Aaron Jones there. But damn it, if you couldn't have got leverage if um, Derrick Henry or Zeke Elliott didn't go off. You could have Aaron Jones as a cheaper option there as well. As it turns out, Devontae Adams had a poor game. Derrick Henry had a poor game. Wide open for Aaron Jones. So that's just an example of something that you, in a perfect situation, can find every week. It's not going to happen. But that's the kind of thing you want to keep an eye out for, is a guy that you can use as leverage in multiple situations. So shame on us for missing that. Absolutely. Great point, David. Yeah. So I've got a little um, co-co-host here with me. He's a, <laughs> he's a little five-year-old that is an absolute dominator on Madden. He he sits there, he plays against adults online and whoops their ass half the time. And he's a good trash talker too. So I want to introduce my son, Mr. Braden Allen Eddy. Braden, why don't you say hello? Hello. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the show, Braden. Patrick and I are very excited to, to have you here. You are probably the most mature person on this podcast. 
Absolutely. Second that. Second that. All right, buddy. So we both know how much you like football, and you know so much about football. So there's a couple players this week that I wanted to get your opinion on. Do you think maybe you would like to talk about a, a couple players Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, buddy. So I'm thinking about playing Cam Newton a little bit this week. Why don't you tell me your thoughts on Cam Newton? Uh, he's pretty good at a runner. Pretty good runner. Yeah. What about throwing they the ball? They got a lot of trick plays on their playbook. Oh, do they? Yeah. Do they like to run them at the goal line? Um. Near the end zone? No. No, they just like to run them whenever. Yeah. Okay. They like to run Christian McCaffrey like up the middle. Mm. And one time. You mean when he used to be on the Panthers? Oh yeah. Because now he's on the Patriots. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you never know which running back he's going to hand the ball to there. But do you think that Cam Newton is a good play this week? Sure. Yeah. Do you, is he going to be hard to tackle, or do you think he's going to be easy to tackle? Probably like medium and all that. Probably medium. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's see. Well, we talked about a quarterback then, so now let's talk about a wide receiver. Um, a guy that I know that you really like is Julio Jones. So, Julio Jones did have a little bit of a, of a foot injury last week, and yeah. he didn't quite produce like the way that we would expect him to, but if he's healthy this week, what do you think we can expect Julio Jones to do? Uh, I would expect him... To do a diving one-handed catch. For a touchdown? For, like, they're go like, all the way down to the other person's end zone. Uh-huh. So he's um, actually going to score a touchdown, though, Braden. That's what you're saying. Yeah, so, like, from, like, the 30 or the 40 somewhere. Oh, so, like, a 30-yard diving touchdown catch yeah. from Matt Ryan? Mm-hmm. Wow. All right, well, you heard it here, folks. Uh... You can chalk Julio Jones up for for one at least one touchdown this week. Do you think he might score two or three, or probably just one? Probably like I'm gonna say I would go for six. You think he's gonna score six yeah. touchdowns this week? In one drive. In, like, he's gonna have six touchdowns in one drive. Yeah. That's gotta be an NFL record. Is there Absolutely. just gonna be? Are they playing like? Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, they, well, I don't even like, know how to. Are they playing one person in just one day? Wow. Okay. All right. Well, Braden, if it's all right with you, Pat and I are going to go ahead and get into some of our plays for the week. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, buddy. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you want to do a running back? Yeah. Okay. Um, Who do you want? You got a running back. Yeah. Who's your running back for this week? They can't be injured. Uh, What about, um, well, what about Derrick Henry? That was Pat's, that was, uh. Pat's guy last week. Do you think Derrick Henry might be a good play? You know, in Superstar KO, you can choose, like, if you get Julio Jones or a legend player. Mm -hmm. Like, say that you have, like, a legend receiver. Uh Uh-huh. So you can put him at running back. Oh, wow. You can certainly just, uh, like, Christian McCaffrey wide receiver. Wow. Just mix it up, huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right, well, Pat and I are going to go ahead and and get into our picks, okay? Yeah. All right, buddy. Well, it was a great job by you. We really appreciate your time. Am I going to ask you guys a question? No. All right, Pat, let's get into it, my friend. (laughs) Thanks, Braden. That was awesome. All right, so so let's start out, David, with the gospel, our core play of the week. Um, You know, for me this week, I'm looking at Russell Wilson. 7300 bucks. Cowgirls at the Seahawks, the quiet 12th man. Um, you know, for me, I can argue the point that he might be the best quarterback in the league. He's at least in that discussion. Best football um, player in the league, my friend. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, may, he, he's not the most dangerous guy. Uh, he might not be the most talented guy, but, man, is this dude consistent. 34.6 fantasy points a game over the first two. The Seattle offense is firing on all cylinders right now. They got the Cowgirls coming to town. This is going to be a high-scoring game. You're going to get 30 pass attempts. Uh, for a player of this caliber against a team with a questionable secondary, even as the highest-priced quarterback on the slate 
and the seventh highest priced player period on the slate. Russell's in line for another monster game. Spend the, uh, the money on him. He's a sure thing for me. Uh, there's a lot of value at other positions this week that can allow you to do this. Russell Wilson, put it in there. Well, you know how I feel about paying up a quarterback. I know. Um, and, I mean, I love Russell Wilson. Um, I uh, I don't know how much I'm going to pay up for, for Russell Wilson personally. Um, if anything, take a play from last week's book, and I'm much more likely to have shares of Chris Carson. But to be honest with you, probably won't have much of either um part of the reason i won't have much of either is even though i love chris carson my gospel for this week is miles sanders sixty four hundred dollars uh for the eagles versus the Bengals. this is a no-brainer for me this week miles sanders will be not my highest owned player um but he's he's going to be my highest owned running back the browns absolutely destroyed the Bengals last week on the ground because the middle of that defense is injured and it's not going to be healthy for week three. So I'm looking for a fully healthy Sanders to go in there and take it to pound town with that rock. Um, I expect him just to absolutely eat this week. Um, It doesn't really matter what the game script is. Uh, He's going to have a juicy matchup, uh, whether, you know, he's going to be pounding the rock 30 times or whether, you know, Somehow they get behind. He's he's you know got the opportunity to catch plenty of balls as well. So Miles Sanders for me, gospel week three. Yeah, that's a nice pick. Uh, you know, and talking about catching balls, you know, why don't you why don't you share with us your devil for this week? Who are you fading? Oh boy. Well, Braden's going to be ticked at me. Um, <laughs> but the guy that I'm fading is Julio Jones. Uh, oh, no. Dude, seventy four hundred dollars. So I mean, you you're paying for him. He's facing a legitimate Bears defense, um, but more than anything, the, the the main reason for me, dude was not healthy last week. Period. Um, you know, if, if you're like most people, you know, and you didn't see anything but the highlights of that incredible uh, Falcons and Cowgirls matchup last week, then you may not realize just how much he struggled. Um, I mean, this looks like a really good matchup on paper because uh, the Falcons have just offensively been on a roll this year. Partly because their defense sucks so much, but um, with incredible weapons like you know uh, Ridley and Hurst available, I'm just shying away from Julio um, because they're just safer, healthier options for DFS purposes. And not that you necessarily need it this week, but they're less expensive. Yeah, and you know I'm I'm right there with you. Uh, we're we're kind of on the same wavelength here because my devil for this week is Matt Ryan. Uh, 6,600 bucks, you know, he's been the absolute best version of himself so far this season. 723 yards passing, six touchdowns, only one INT, a little over 28 fantasy points a game over the first two. But he runs into a Bears defense this weekend. That's been rather impressive uh, thus far against opposing QBs, albeit that that small sample size was Matt Stafford um, and Daniel Jones. Uh you know, the Bears tend to struggle a little bit against uh, running backs, though. I see this kind of trending more towards a big game for Gurley um, than Ryan and that passing attack. Uh, so I am going to uh, fade Matt Ryan. Yeah, so either we're we're both going to be right or we're both going to be wrong from the sounds of it, huh? Yeah, you know, and I, I mean, I'll just... I'll lead right into my archangel, you know, the pivot. My pivot for this week is Todd Gurley, uh, 5800 bucks. You know, as I mentioned, I think that the game plan is going to favor him. Uh, he's going to get 20 touches no matter what. You take a look at Adrian Peterson in that first game against Chicago. He was 6.6 yards of carry. Before Braden's boy, Saquon, went down with an injury last week, he was averaging seven yards of carry. Uh, the matchup is right. I think the passing game is going to get shut down. Chicago doesn't exactly have what we call a prolific offense. So there's one of two things that's going to happen here. I'm either completely wrong about Matt Ryan and he lights up the Bears, gets out of a, or they get out to a huge lead um, and they turn around and they hand it to Todd the rest of the night. Uh, or Matty Ice can't get it going and they have to rely on him. So, Archangel for me, Todd Gurley. What are your thoughts? 
Well, I'm going with a running back as well. Um, going with running back in a much better situation, I think. Um, and it's cheaper. So, I mean, you want to talk about juicy matchups. A running back against the Panthers' D is the epitome of that. When people think of the Chargers' backfield, I think that they naturally think of Austin Eckler. And, I mean, well, they should. I mean, he's a terrific player. Uh, for my money, especially for Week 3, if we're talking about putting the ball on the ground, I will take Kelly and his $1,800 cheaper salary, personally. Uh, I think he's going to outcarry Eckler this week, and it could be as much as 2-1. to one. You know, I mean, with McCaffrey out, I could see the Chargers with, you know, uh, Herbert at quarterback now. You know, I, I could not only see them winning that game, but they're going to baby him and, you know, they're going to lean on that running game. And, you know, Kelly was huge last week. And I think that he's got every reason in the world to, to have a big week again. And I just think that, you know, if you're looking for somebody on the ground, it's Kelly, not Eckler. No thoughts, Pat. You don't. You don't think I'm smart or stupid? Uh, no. It's you know I I do like Austin Eckler. I know that you pay a premium for him, um, but the couple lineups that I've built already, uh, I did have him in there um, because it is a great matchup. Um, if you can afford him, I think he's the play there. Uh, but it, you know it, this is a pivot, and and Joshua Kelly is indeed a, a really good option for that. So I, I agree with you, David. All right, I like it then. So let's go ahead and let's just take a real quick union break because, you know, in the DFS family here, we are union members, card carrying, of course. So we'll go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, Patrick, welcome back. Um, Did you go ahead and get a tinkle in? Yeah, we got that tinkle done. It was quick, though. Fantastic. You didn't shake it too many times, did you? No, that would be considered something else. Yeah, I don't want you playing with yourself on the clock, my friend. That's that's <laughs> even for a union. That's fireball offense. Yeah, it's frowned upon. Yes, sir. So let's get into the heresy uh, contrarian pick of the week. Why don't you go ahead and talk about this dirty Spartan? Yeah, the dirty Spartan, uh, Kirk Cousins. Uh, the Titans are at the Vikings this week. Cousins is at fifty five hundred dollars. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, he hasn't exactly set the world on fire this season, uh, averaging a puny 12 fantasy points a game. Uh, but lucky for him, he squares up against Tennessee, uh, and their defense has given up uh, over 270 yards a game, over 19 fantasy points a game to quarterbacks last year, and just got torched by the mighty mustache in Jacksonville uh, last weekend to the tune of 28 and a half points, uh, 339 yards passing three TDs. Uh, I expect to see a lot of Thielen and Cook in this one. I think Kirk Cousins is an easy uh, 4X on the investment this weekend uh, with Captain Kirk. Uh, really solid value on him this week. You know what that pick tells me, Patrick? <laughs> I can only imagine. Share it with me. That pick tells me that you love balls. You've got yeah. huge ones, and you just like to show them off, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. I'll tell That's you what, sure. my friend, I also have a huge sack. And you, know how oh, yeah? and you want to know how I'm going to prove that? Show me. My heresy pick, Carson Wentz. An equally terrible quarterback. Well, maybe not equally, but almost as terrible of a quarterback over the first two weeks of the season. I mean, you know... <laughs> He doesn't have a lot to throw to, um, not at the wide receiver position. Now, he's blessed with, you know, two of the top tight ends in in football. The game, yeah. Yeah, but not exactly, um, you know, the Carson Wentz play here that, that makes you salivate for week three. However, I think that at $5,800, which is 300 more than Cousins, but um, 15th most expensive on the slate, so pretty much right in the middle, which is, you know, where I like to find myself more often than not, I think uh, he he could well prove to be a terrific value this week. Now, I don't he's not going to be my top owned quarterback, um, but I'm going to have somewhere between two to four of my you know twenty lineups with him in it. Um, and and a lot of it really is. I mean, let's just face it: the Bengals aren't good anywhere, specifically on defense. 
So while I, I definitely not advocating at all for matching up Sanders and Wentz together um, in the same lineup, I do think that in lineups that you know I don't have Sanders in, that that Wentz is going to be a guy that that's I'm going to get my shares there. So if you want to take take Wentz, pair him with either Ertz or Goddard. Um, spoiler alert: Ertz is going to be my top owned player this week. I don't have him as the gospel because um, I think Sanders is a better play in general, but Ertz is going to be probably my top owned player. But either way, take Wentz, pair him with Ertz or Goddard. Run it back with A.J. Green. Maybe run it back with Tyler Boyd. And I think you're going to have a really nice leverage play for a couple lineups in MMEs. Yeah, that is equally as ballsy. I I definitely agree with you on that. Whose balls will be bigger? We'll find out next week. Tune in next week to see <laughs> whose balls are bigger. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, hey. It'll be interesting, uh, but I I think that they both got potential to to have pretty decent games for the value. I really do, and, and they'll I both suck. <laughs> and they'll both suck. I I personally don't mind uh, pairing Sanders up with Wentz. Uh, you know, he's one of those don't, backs that can catch it out of the backfield a little bit. It. The the, so, the odds of that game script happening are so slim that you're <laughs> just asking for trouble. Well, then I guess I'll just have to throw my Hail Mary out there and okay. we'll see what happens. Uh, so, speaking of Hail Marys, uh, I've got Adam Humphreys, uh, Titans at the Vikes. You know, I, I've got a feeling that Cousins kind of uh, goes off a little bit this week, uh, you know, on the other side of the field. So, Tanny Hill uh, is going to have to sling it around a little bit to keep up the pace. Uh, in two games this year, Adam Humphreys, who's only 3,900 bucks, um, 13 targets, 11 catches, 95 yards and a score. You know, he's not going to set the world on fire, but for the $3,900 value, uh, he's a good option to save you some loot and he can get you into that 4X territory if he can find the end zone. Um, and it also kind of works, uh, you know, in a stack if I'm playing at Cousins as well. So uh, Adam Humphreys, Mr. Reliable, uh, you throw the ball to him, he catches it, he's consistent. Uh, that's who I got. Who's your Hail Mary, David? Well, um, this is maybe a name that people don't even know. Um, I mean, I'm not saying Adam Humphreys is a household name, but I'm going with Daryl Cash Mooney. $3,300 wide receiver from the Bears going up against those Falcons, all right? So, you know, we, we talked about this. Dirty Birds give up a lot of points, and they're going to score a lot of points too. Uh, this particular matchup, you know, Allen Robinson and Anthony Miller are going to get a lot of run, uh, and rightfully so. If you've watched any of the Bears games, you will notice that Cash Mooney has looked very, very quick on the field um, and, and quite good. He's had three catches in each of the first two games, caught a TD last week. I think that stacking Mooney with True Bitchkey, <laughs> running it back with Ridley, is a really nice leverage play. Um, now, of course, you could always run Ryan with either Ridley or Hurst and run it back with Mooney as a way to differentiate yourself as well. Now, again, we're talking Hail Mary, so you know he's not in you know, 20, 30, 40% of my lineups. I'm going to put him in there once maybe twice and i'm only going to do so when i'm either playing ryan at quarterback i don't think i'm going to play trubitsky um so it's going to be as just the run back with one of my matt ryan stacks but i think daryl mooney gives you a decent chance i mean three x isn't hard to get you need 10 points i mean that that's not asking much um so that's my hail mary for this week is there anything well, else that you want to add to this, Patrick, before I kick it back to Braden one last time? No, that's that's where I was going to go, man. I just wanted to, once again, Braden, thank you for uh, joining us and blessing us with your knowledge. Uh, good luck in Madden. Um, and next time your dad talks crap about Julio Jones, uh, sock him in the shoulder blade. Yeah. <laughs> All right, buddy, do you want to go ahead and, and tell the people listening any, any last thing before we take off? I didn't know what 
you guys were talking about the Hail Mary. Uh, I was thinking you guys were talking about the Hail Mary and the gauntlet. I'm like, uh, I didn't know that. But if you guys forgot, like and subscribe and comment down below what your favorite player was. All right. Well, you heard Braden. Ring that bell and go ahead. Give Patrick a follow. Uh, give myself a follow and, and make sure you subscribe so you can listen to us next week. So, with that being said, uh, best of luck to everyone except for Patrick in week three. And we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Good luck, everybody. Have a good weekend.